Hey YouTube, good morning. So I caught a small little swarm in my backyard yesterday and I didn't get it on film, but the very first thing my wife said after I caught this little swarm was, you've got to make a video of that contraption you use. And I was like, ah, it's, it was a great idea. Thank you uh, to my wife for giving me this idea. So there's a lot of um, swarms that go into trees that are just above shake height, right? You know, you could even, put a tarp on the ground and shake a, le uh, a limb and let the swarm fall to the ground 10 to <clears throat> 20 feet, something like that. And the bees would probably be fine. But the queen <clears throat> could get hurt in that, in that drop. Um, I've seen videos of people that take buckets and they shake it up against the tree. And <clears throat> that is the genesis of this contraption I made. And this is it. You might uh, notice this is a water bottle that you would put into a, into a water jug. It's basically the five gallon bucket on a stick trick, but with a few modifications. I cut the bottom off so that the lid can be inverted and, and pulled into the top. These are plastic crossbars. This was a modification I didn't realize I needed. This when it's cut, needed a little bit of rigidity. Probably several ways I could have given this some, some rigidity. Uh, I took some hard plastic strips and just kind of cut them in there in a, in a cross fashion. But the important thing is it sticks out here. See how these stick out? The reason that's important is because when this lid closes, guess it, it pulls down to those stops. Um, so that is kind of important that you have something that sticks out and gives rigidity. Um, the other thing is the bottom of it, I've just filled with uh, spray foam. You could probably use epoxy or anything else um, to, to do it. And I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm getting to the handle part because that's the most important part. So there's a string that goes all the way through from the bottom and I've made a little cleat down here. Um, I don't know if you can see that out of a nail um, so that I can kind of tie this off. And of course, I've got some string here. The string needs to be the length of your pole. And uh, I think you'll see when I demonstrate how this works, why you need that much string and then some way of keeping string. But you see, I've got the string that goes through there. But once it's uncleated, this, this lid can hang down. I usually have it kind of like that when I'm ready to go push this up against the swarm. And then when I've pushed it and I see the bees in the bottom, I pull it tight. Um, that's why this rounded edge is kind of nice as opposed to a five gallon bucket. It kind of finds its way home good enough to get down. Um, the reason I like this jug better than <clears throat> any five gallon bucket is because when I am looking up at the swarm, I can see through it. I can see the limb, I can see the swarm, and I can aim a little bit better. And then when I jostle it up against the tree, the bees fall into the bucket. I can see the bees in the bucket, and then I know to pull my string to, to capture them and then to bring this down to the ground. That is the premise behind why I like the clear bucket, the way I built this with filling this with foam, and then the string mechanism onto the lid and the lid having some plastic parts that stick through the edge um, just enough to hold the lid on top. Now the handle mechanism. I've put foam inside of the handle uh, for strength and so bees don't get in there. Um, because if bees get in there, then shaking them out is a little bit harder. So it's a little bit more of a bucket. Now I have tried a lot of different ways of attaching this to an extension pole like this. This is a standard, very long extension pole. I think when I bought it, it says it's um, eight feet to 23 feet. So this goes out to 23 feet, which is about the height that you would probably have any pole that could hold any amount of bees into a bucket. But this is a pretty standard adapter here to screw things onto such as uh, paint brushes or brooms or different things. That was the premise of what I 3D printed here. I 3D printed this little plastic thing and I will put a, uh, a copy of where I put it up on Thingiverse for those of you that do 3D printing so that I can push this through and in here and it screws on. So now it's, it's on there. 
Uh, and this little plastic adapter has the threads on the inside that go onto the pole, and it's got some adapters on here so my zip ties hold it to the bucket. You can attach your pole to your bucket any way you want, as long as it stays on there. You could probably manage some zip ties and duct tape, but at that point, it's attached to your pole. I wanted mine to somehow be able to be put away after swarm season so it wasn't always attached to the pole. So this is kind of uh, probably the most custom part that I've built and evolved, but it was mostly of convenience of being able to put it on a pole and take it off of a pole. And perhaps if I needed a different pole, longer or shorter, it would work. So that's the basics of it. Clear plastic, a lid that's inverted on a pole string that uh, pulls all the way down and tight, but that's how it works. Um, it works really good actually. Uh, and when I put it away for the winter, uh, you know, I just, it, this is all I've got. And then my pole goes where I, where I keep that. So let me show you uh, this in action. Um, I'm not actually catching a swarm at the moment. There are no swarms in the trees, but I'm just gonna kind of show the actions of how I use this and uh, how I um, kind of bring it up and down. All right, YouTube, I've got it all set up. I've got my pole and I extended it so that it's about the right height. Um, obviously an extension pole to the branch. I've got this probably at about 20 feet. I attached my bucket to the end of the pole and I stretched my string so that it, you know, it's about the right length uh, of the pole. Um, if you've never done this before, and you put a swarm a box, this is just an empty nuke box with an entrance nice here on the bottom. If you're gonna shake bees out, it's best to put a tarp down because when you shake the bees out of the bucket onto the tarp, they don't get stuck in the grass or start climbing up little strings or flowers. They just kind of march in. And if you get the queen and the queen goes in, then they start fanning and the rest march in. So that is the objective, is to shake the bees off of the tree until you get the queen. And hopefully the queen goes in without getting damaged and then they start following and marching in. This tarp gives them a surface for them to, to, to march up and down. So this is, I'm just, now I'm not actually catching a swarm. I did this yesterday. Uh, this is for demonstration purposes only, um, but I'm gonna film it how I do it, how I did it yesterday. So I kind of pull my lid so it's nice and tight and I just kind of keep it and I walk back. So I have my pole and then get the weight of the bucket. And you can see the bucket being clear is really, really important because I can see the branches, the trees, and if there was a swarm up there. And I'm gonna go over to where the swarm was yesterday and you just kind of line it up. And this is just like shaking from down low, but now I'm doing it 20 feet in the air. And you would kind of give it a nice little jolt and then pull the lid on. And then carefully keeping the lid on, lowering down and shaking them out. Okay. Shaking the bees out onto the tarp is the objective here. And now, of course, if you were dressed up or if you uh, were not worried about getting stung, looking for the queen, straightening, straightening this out and kind of uh, shooing them inside. That's generally how it works. I'm gonna do it one more time. That's how it works. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm trying to keep this short and sweet and show you how my uh, swarm trap bucket works. Have a great day.